Good afternoon everybody. How are you all today? I hope you're well. I'm very well because I'm continuing my afternoon from the last video you saw in which I did my squash harvest. Oh my goodness. I was so delighted in the end. Nowhere near what I had last year, either in number or in size of actual squash. Here we go. Rusty's still hanging around. But my goodness they will keep me well fed it's one of those things as well i have to remind myself of this on so many occasions when i'm <laughs> cat hair in my nose thanks buddy um at the end of a session make sure i leave enough time to for example with the squash give them a bit of a clean pack my granny trolley there's no way i will get them all home in one go so bring them into the shed arrange them, <laughs> not arrange them florally, harvest festively, just arrange them in the shed and then each of my next few visits I will take another load home and um, they'll go under my bed <laughs> until I'm ready to eat them. Yay, so I'm still giddy from that. Uh, I've done a few little other bits and bobs of jobs around the place. The All that rain we had I don't know how much wind came with it, I wasn't keeping an eye on wind speeds and things, but things like my Cosmos have taken a right battering, so I've had to tie those back up. My Flint Corn has taken a battering, so they're sort of rather jaunty angles. I think they should be okay, and I'll leave them exactly as they are for another, probably a couple of weeks or so before I do their harvest. As I am emptying beds or at least thinking about it um, my thoughts are now turning to you know getting things tidied up getting beds covered I was when I did the squash harvest I was going to get the whole of that number one bed get all the individual beds within it so if you think I've got far, four large beds that are about 25 square meters each and within each single large bed I've then got five smaller beds which are about a meter wide a little bit more in some places by four meters long so what I was going to do in bed number one was clear the whole clear everything out all my tomato plants poles what have you get compost on get the cardboard on but I didn't I'm going to leave that for now because my priority is harvesting and sowing so like i said in the last video i cleared the pepper and cucumber bed to get ready to put in my broad beans and today oh, i'm so excited i'm going to do my potato harvest in order to get the bed ready to plant my garlic so with both the broad beans and the garlic hmm, am i late not really I think it's one of those jobs you can do, you can do any time from the end of September. I've done both of mine as early as the beginning of November, never had an issue. So here we are, middle of October, they'll be fine. So, um, oh and I just wanted to say a very quick hello to Logan and Aaron. Hi boys! Logan and Aaron are, I think, our youngest friends on here. They're both under 10. And how exciting. They're hoping that they're going to get an allotment next year. I really, 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 really hope you can get it, boys, because it'll be so much fun. So a quick hello to those two. <sighs> and now, <laughs> I know I'm going really, really fast today, aren't I? Because I'm giddy, firstly, with the harvest, and secondly, to just be outside again after six days cooped up indoors so i'm going to go and get on with the potato harvest now of course i'm going to take you with me of course i shall i'm just going to do my disclaimer now don't know how good it's going to be because everybody i've spoken to on my site that's harvested potatoes i mean obviously i haven't spoken to everybody but all of those people that i have spoken to have had really rubbish potato harvests this year so let's approach this as I did with the squash harvest 
and not have high expectations. If I get a couple of nice baking spuds out, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I immediately now want to have a jacket potato. A jacket potato with some, oh, creamy blue cheese in it. Oh, stop it, stop it, right. <laughs> Low expectations, wellies on, potato bed. In the spirit of hope, rather than expectation, I've got my wheelbarrow here, ready for the harvest. <laughs> now, we all know the first and fundamental rule with harvesting our potatoes, don't we? You have to do it in your pirate accent. Arr, let's find some buried treasure. <laughs> Arr. So these were, oh, hold on, the barrow's a bit far away. So the tops, I cut the tops off. It was only about 10 days or so ago. If you remember, I was saying that the idea of that is to help them to start curing. And ideally, I would get them out of the ground. <laughs> oh, the ground is so muddy. I will show you closer in a sec. But yeah, it would be ideal to do this on a nice sunny day so I could spread them out just get them a little bit more dried off before I think about putting them in their paper sacks which I will just I'll make some paper sacks from newspaper yeah. um, either make some paper sacks from newspaper or if you pop to your local greengrocer they should have some paper sacks knocking around to get rid of or your local chip shop do chip shops even peel and chop their own potatoes anymore do they just get them all ready done anyway ask ask around or like I say make your own from newspaper this is really not ideal for potato digging today it's so muddy I'm not complaining though because by the looks of it arr, arr, my first bit of treasure is coming out looking okay oh but it is heavy though because it's so wet oh la la oops missed a few obviously if I spike any as I'm going today I will oh, as a whopper yeah if I spike any as I go I will set those aside and uh, use them up straight away. I think I've mentioned before, I'm not, I'm not a huge consumer of potatoes. Um, so like I was saying, if this crop had been rubbish, who knows, that's just two plants, the rest may be rubbish. I wouldn't be too, too disappointed. However, I do enjoy them when I've got them. So yeah, like I say, if I spear any today, I shall certainly be having a jacket spot tonight. Actually, whatever happens, I'll be having a jacket spot tonight, now that I've mentioned it. Oh, it's that how to decide what to, what to fill the jacket with though, isn't it? Cheese, mm. cheese is always a good one, though I try to eat less these days, partly because of the expense of buying it but also sort of just from an ethical point of view. Chili, oh, chili is always another lovely one for a spot, isn't it? Some chili beans. I've got a feeling, because it's so wet and claggy, I'm almost certainly going to be leaving a few down there. Arr, let's find what's in this one. Where's my bucket for my compost? Oh, beauties. Beauties and the beast. God, some whoppers. This, um, this variety is Cara. I've, I've grown it regularly over the last few years. I like the taste. It's, it's great as a baker. 
Um, I've roasted them too, works nice as a roast. I don't make chips at home, but from all accounts, by all accounts, it makes a good chip spod too. One of the reasons I like it is that I have tried a few different varieties over the years, but I've always found Cara to be pretty reliable. And you know, this is the big thing for me. Oh my goodness, that's a football. <laughs> Can you? Oh, I've got to show you this one closer. Yeah. What was, oops, what I was about to say is, I find they store well too. The size of that, that's ridiculous. That's like <laughs> head size. I think that might be for supper tonight. The thing is as well is if I do it as a oh if I do it as a baker, that's probably gonna be too much to eat in one go. But what I could do with the other half is just make some bubble and tweak tomorrow morning for breakfast. I'll pick some kale and then yes, bubble and tweak. There's a recipe for that in my in the kitchen section. Uh, and then cover it with milled flint corn. Gorgeous. Right, let's get on. Oh, let's pop this in the barrow. Okay, try and give you a, oh, I missed a couple. Let's just try and give you a slightly closer shot. You can probably, I don't know if you can pick up, but well, you can certainly tell from my gloves, this is how my soil gets when it's wet. It really does get incredibly laggy and yucky and um, it's it's exacerbated at the moment by the fact that having cut all the foliage off when did I cut the foliage off 10 days ago whenever this has been exposed for the last few days to all of that pelting pelting rain so Sorry, excuse me, huffing and puffing. So once I've got these all out, I'm going to do a bit of prep for planting the garlic. Oh, sorry, worms. Beautiful, massive worms in here. Yeah, I'll do the prep for the garlic and then I'm going to get it covered over again because we're due yet more rain. This is obviously a considerably nicer more fun job when the soil is dry Arr. <laughs> Arr. because then when you go like this <laughs> they all tumble out not so much when it's wet like this so but you can see it's it's pretty good yield from each plant let me just pop those <laughs> i don't know if you're going to be able to see them for all the mud that's on them. Actually these are quite handy sizes. I don't mind having a few biggies but it's definitely, especially when you're cooking for one, it's actually really handy to have a slightly smaller produce. <laughs> oh did I spear it? Not quite. Yeah it's, it's handy to have smaller produce so that you can just cook for one although having said that mostly as you know by now as I cook I tend to cook in batches so I've got four meals but they yeah that's a nice little harvest from one plant good old Cara okay so I'm gonna get on um, with this bout and then get back to you when they're all out Yes, it's another wheelbarrow harvest coming down the path shot. Oh, I don't know how much they weigh, but they weigh a lot. Right. Shall I give you a closer look? Come on. I tell you what, that's going to keep me going a while, isn't it? Oh, and there's some 
absolute stonkers in there. Look at this one. I can't look, it's bigger than my hand. You know how big my hands are. Oh, what a great little harvest. I've only, amazingly, I've only spiked one of them as they've come out. Um, just having the quickest of looks at them as I'm taking them out. I don't see any damage on them. Yay! Oh, happy, happy sight. They're absolutely caked in soggy, sticky mud at the moment. So, hmm, not sure. I think what I might do is spread them out on the shed floor, but then cover them with paper so the light doesn't get to them and let them just dry out a little bit for a couple of days until I'm next down and then come back and get ready to take them all home. And once they're home, I can weigh them. But I've got to tell you, there's a few kilos in there. Fantastic. I mean, look at the, the size of these ones. Oh, brilliant. I'm delighted. Oh, I do find this an insanely pleasing sight. So that's all the spuds out. Well, <laughs> I say all the spuds. Undoubtedly, I've missed a few. And all I've done is I've added some chicken pellets, chicken mini pellets, raked them in a bit. And, oh, I do love, love, love the sight of the soil. I do love my soil, no matter how much I complain about it. I do love it. But as much as I love it, as much as I love this site, it is going to get covered with a couple of net tunnels until I'm ready to sow. This is going to be for the garlic. I will sow in a few days' time. But yeah, I'm going to get this covered with the net tunnels just to protect it from all of the rain we're due again. The other thing, just while I'm standing here, this is the X rock and core bed. You can see it's quite a bit narrower than this bed. When I was deciding on making these sort of new perma beds last year, I didn't get the sizes quite right. So when I plant the garlic, I'm going to plant it from this side, coming over, and then stop. And then I'm going to make this bit path and just dig out this just to make this bed a little bit wider purely to give me more options when I come to planting each year. So the nets for here I've nicked off the calibrase so I'll just give you a quick little look at how it's doing. Here it is. So I had the small green tunnel on this side and my large tunnel, my lovely large tunnel from Phil, thank you Phil, on this side. That's made quite a difference hasn't it? I think this is because it was the shade tunnel. They're definitely, they've definitely been stunted by that. But you know, they'll be fine, they'll catch up. Um, and what's really lovely about getting the nets off is getting the first glimpse of, can you see in there? The broccoli forming. Hurrah, 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 hurrah. So actually, with, with that other row being a bit behind, that's fine because then I won't have it all coming at the same time. But they look great. They look absolutely lovely. Some of the leaves are a bit crushed over, as you can see, uh, just from where they had reached the top of the nets. But these will all perk up now in the next few days. Oh, I just keep catching glimpses of the colour of the blueberries. And they're beautiful. It's like they're on fire. Oh, gorgeous. I have to say, I was not expecting this beautiful colour from them. That's very delightful making. And look, in this gloaming light, how the calendula like to glow. Oh, you are such happy, happy wee flowers, aren't you? Thank you for giving us all so much brightness on this really rather dull day. Oh, actually, also with talking of nets off, let me just take you back over to the spuds. I'll show you the purple sprouting broccoli. Not that path, it's blocked with nets. <laughs> Coming this way. Let's go through the bean arch. Still so much foliage on these gigantes. All the beans are picked now. I'm just leaving all this because I haven't got time to deal with it at the moment. And it's not doing any harm. Oh my goodness, I think I've just spotted a couple more to pick. But yes, 
purple sprouting broccoli. You can see it's all quite, <laughs> all the leaves are a bit crushed and snarled where they had got to the top of the nets and pushed the nets off. But they'll, they'll happily unfurl in the next few days. And I'll have a bit of a look through now because there are some snails in here. Pick them off, but oh, beautiful. I mean, look, isn't that just a gorgeous leaf? <laughs> I know, it's just a leaf at the moment, but they're all looking so healthy and well. This one at the end, <laughs> it fell over. So I'll give that a stake of some description. Oh, and I just dumped on the end here. Um, I didn't put a purple sprouting in this end because that's where I had that random orange um, cherry tomato came up. So I left it in. So obviously I've taken it out now and there was a gap. So I've just dumped on there the, um, what is that? It's the peppers, all that snipped up pepper detritus. If you remember under here, I mulched with what I did have in the compost bin. It wasn't very well composted, but it was better than nothing. And as with all the beds, I mean, put it this way, all the beds that are gonna be covered, I'm not talking about that, but like say with the chickpeas and as I will do with the rock and core, all the ones that will be covered in compost leaves, cardboard, what have you, that's a given. Any that are still open, as in still have something growing, like the purple sprouting broccoli, and a like over here where I've got the Cavolinero Calabrese, the carrots are coming out of their net soon. Any of those which are going to be uncovered and have stuff growing in them over winter, I will also be on the scrounge for mulching materials to just keep adding and adding and adding underneath them so that I don't hopefully come next spring end up with concrete brassica beds again. Oh, it does make me happy. Actually, it's beautiful light at this time of day as well. Amazingly, we're getting a little tiny bit of blue in the sky. It's been so, it was getting so dark even just half an hour ago. I thought I was gonna to have to leg it away from the rain but I'm delighted I've been able to make the most of today. For the most part, it's been so quiet too. Just a few birds, gorgeous. And actually one of my neighbors was just down and she was commenting on how beautifully quiet it is today, especially as we don't have any wind. Just bringing you around here because look, oh, you crazy gigantes. It's time to have a little nap. Beautiful flowers, middle of October, and it's flowering again. And this gorgeous beauty here, isn't that a sight to behold? What a gorgeous afternoon. This afternoon has made me so happy. <laughs> That's partly the um, contrast of having been stuck indoors for so many days and desperate to get out. But it's just one of those sort of perfect, perfect days in the garden. As I was saying a second ago, there's been no wind today, so... And I'm not just talking about it from the point of view of filming, the noise of filming, but just that real stillness in the garden. The light's been changing all day, at moments just achingly beautiful where you have to just stop in your tracks and and just look and be in that light. Gorgeous. It's been, uh, it's, it's so funny that you can tell it's the first dry day in ages because I have seen so many plot holders this afternoon. More than I would see even at a weekend, for example. No one's been here for much more than sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. One of my neighbors was down for quite a while, but basically people are just scurrying down here and just having pick 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 of this people going home with baskets full of brassicas and the last of their tomatoes and it's that real kind of just about to change over from tomatoes to brassicas so it's been really lovely to just say hello to everybody and everybody of course has been talking about the weather and how wet the ground is and 
there's a few people I've spoken to who were planning on getting their spuds out but changed their minds because the ground is so wet look I've got mine out they're going to come in the shed I'll get them covered over so they're not in the light uh, but just let them have a couple of days drying in the shed and then the next time I'm here I'm hoping to be back in a couple of days to start sowing and planting and beginning to take home the spud and squash harvest oh my goodness kilos and kilos and kilos ah <sighs> life's good life is good the light has gone beautiful again just moments like this they're so precious and they just remind us to be to be happy and to be at one with the world so on that note <laughs> I'm going to wend my way home with my first batch of squash so for now it's cheerio from me I'll see you all again really soon because I need to get on with planting and sowing so until then please look after yourselves have fun doing whatever it is you can do outside whenever you can do it until the next time, bye for now.